Hello, so today we're going to, I'm going to unbox this uh, PCIe X4 to M.2 card installing this WD SN530 drive and installing it into this low form factor computer. So let's see how it works. I got this card for only five dollars and like seven cents. It's right after I bought it, it jumped back up to twelve. I will include a link in the description. But this card is pretty basic. It just has X4 slot, direct connection, and it's got a little thermal barrier so that you can uh, cool it. Um, this, and it has a you know, pass-through vent on the side. Of course, you get a low-profile racket that'll just fit right in there. So let's uh, get the SSD installed. So what I've had to do here is just slide that spacer, that empty ring, and I'm hoping if I just screw that down, it'll work. And it did. So the reviews of saying, okay, there's no way to do it, there is, you just have to slot it into that little notch, and then it screws in on the back, and it holds it down. Very, very nice. So I've gotten the low profile bracket installed, now you can have the tiny, the mid-range, another mid-range, and then the longer. So you have all sizes of SSDs can be put in here. And of course I'll add in and add, go back and add in a thermal pad. So now we'll just pop off this cover, take out that bracket. Let's hope I'm installing this into the X16 slot. Just get that in there, and oh boy, got that in there. It's just there. We go. That bracket is sticking out a little bit. Let's see, yeah, that's not gonna. That's not gonna work. As you can see sticking up like that so I gotta figure out what that problem is so I just yeah it's something about it being held down and it just has to pop into place you just have to push on it yeah and then now it's in place and uh, it's working well so that is something to consider that you're gonna have to use some force and push that in there, but now it's in, and it looks like it's probably gonna work. So, now we're gonna go down to boot menu. Ooh, okay. Oh boy. Oh no. Oh boy. I cannot find it anywhere there is a USB hard drive what is the USB hard drive maybe I don't have a USB hard drive in there so maybe it's thinking that this NVMe drive is a USB hard drive I guess uh, USB runs through the PCIe bus, so. Um, no more changes and exit. Let's boot this up and check. So we're in Red Hat Linux, and that's what I have running on this 128 gigabyte SSD. We're gonna go to disks, and hey, there it is. PCSN30, so yeah, all in all, this adapter is very nice. It's $12 on Amazon now, but I got it for five. Um, there are cheaper ones. There is a, um, there's buy fours that are for, you know, seven or eight dollars. And there's also buy ones and it's not very hot. So now I have a storage device for 
this computer. This is more likely going to go into my main computer and I'll be reviewing another adapter for that, but it does work. Um, on older computers, as you saw, it gets recognized as a USB hard drive, but that's nothing to worry about. And so, I'll be posting a review of this drive and the other board that I have coming in. So, thanks for watching. So, in the box of the one lane adapter, we have our screws with the same kind of SSD mounting nut. Um, a big bracket, a small bracket, and of course the card. Now the card has an LED on it, and um, that's pretty much it. So this is the other card compared to it. As you see, it's a lot smaller. And then with an NVMe M.2 SSD, you can really see how just small this card is. So it's a really good option for, you know, tiny form factors. And then, of course, um, for even cheaper prices, they have the X4 adapter. So I paid about, I don't know, $7.5 for this. But for 6 you can get a uh, X4 adapter if you need it. So let's install this SSD and see how it looks. Now when installing this, this little nut adapter it's very small it goes on so much easier than the other one um you don't have to force it on and you don't have to struggle with it it's very small though but it is much appreciated so i'm just having to take the screws out of this cover flip this out and then somehow figure out how to snap this thing out it's very very difficult oh boy my GPU is really sagging but he got it out hopefully I can get that card installed it's a very tight fit but let's see how it works I installed the bracket on the wrong side, that's why I had to take it out. Um, I was wondering why I was warping, but it's straight. Uh, that is how your bracket is supposed to be. And there's ever so slightest wiggle. It doesn't matter, it doesn't hurt anything, and it's actually pretty fine. And it might even be tight on your SSD. But this is a WD SN530, so let's install it. So I'm just going to stick this in here. Have to make sure that is up, and hopefully, oh yeah, oh, the bracket is going on the wrong side, you know, it's a very tedious thing trying to get an adapter as well, but it just, there we go, slotted in pretty well, and I don't see any visible bending, it's straight, and it fits very well on that bracket so it's a very good installation and it's you know accurate dimensions you know that's a big thing buying these cheap cards so turning on the computer it does not recognize a drive as a drive unlike the other computer which recognized it as a usb hard drive i think that may be a bios thing so you can see this is actually pcie 2.0 1x lane so it's pretty slow but it's still better than nothing. It might be even better than a SATA hard drive. So you get a little red light. It may blink or go green, but we'll see once we get it benchmarked. So I've gotten my computer to boot up. That light is still red. My hard drive is really slow now, so I'm glad I got this. Um, but now we have an allocated volume. And it says this drive was new, um, only 113 gig read and 155 gig write. Um, it turns out the transfer mode is actually PCI 1.0 by 1. Um, and the drive is 3.0 by 4. So that is going to be, 
I wonder how slow this is going to be. That worries me. So during usage, that light does flash. May be annoying if you have a clear case, so just so you know. But here are the numbers compared. Um, the hard drive gets 82 megabytes a second read, while the SSD gets 207 megabytes a second read. So, you know, that's an addition of 120 uh, 20 megabytes a second. So that's pretty good. But the SSD is running on PCIe 1.0 by 1. That is pretty slow. Now, obviously, you can see that this SSD is being bottlenecked by it. The uh, theoretical speed should be maybe 500 megabytes a second read, or maybe it's even higher at 1,000 or above that. I don't remember. But PCIe 1.0 by one lane, that's the kind of performance you're going to get. And I think that's okay for me, and I think that'll work for me. But it may not be good enough for you if you're wanting to upgrade. So that is what one of these adapters looks like in the computer. It's very interesting, and I mean, I can't complain. I paid five, seven bucks for that adapter and 20 bucks for that SSD. So I think it's a pretty good value, and it's going to get me through a lot of data. And so that'll be very helpful to have. So thanks for watching. Now, the one problem with this method is that my old PC, my motherboard, doesn't support NVMe SSDs. Now, that HP computer that I had used in the beginning of the video does support PCIe a base storage, but this computer, I have a motherboard, a DH67CL, which supports second and third gen Intel chips that does not support PCIe based storage. So I could not use um, that SSD. Now an option is to, if you have to, uh, on the screen you can see using a PC using Clover, and all you do is you install this Clover software onto a USB stick, boot to that USB stick, and it runs a modified interface between the BIOS and the hardware, and it just allows you to boot off of that um, NVMe SSD. But, you know, you always have to boot to that USB stick. If you don't want to do that, you can modify your BIOS, but of course that's really risky, and flashing your BIOS even normally is really risky. So that's just a thing to keep in mind that, you know, if you're on a second or third gen um, computer, you're probably going to have issues booting off of this. Now, you can use it as a normal storage device, but you can't boot off of it. If you're using a fourth gen uh, computer system, still use caution because it may not work for me. It did work, but some computer systems may not work. So search your motherboard, uh, search your chipset. Just in Google your computer if it's a pre-built, or Google the components you have if you built it yourself. But uh, thanks for watching.